Hi, this is Dan Fleming from Dan Smart Software Solutions. This is a demonstration of the slope railing designer uh, not only drawing some railings but also creating a data file that we will import into Excel. We'll open up the program and we'll start out with a with a six foot rail. We'll call this uh, rail R1 and then we'll open up the program and we'll click add <coughs> and we'll call this an R2 and we'll do this one as a 10 footer okay <coughs> we'll add another one we'll call it R3 now we'll also automatically count these drawings for you too It'll change that from, you know, R1, R2, R3 automatically, so you don't have to put it in right there. You know, one less step that you have to worry about. And we'll add another one to the existing data set. In other words, that's what we're trying to do. This one is called number four. And we'll make this one an 18-footer. And we'll do one more. This will be drilling number five. And let's make this a 22 footer. Okay. And doing that for a couple of different reasons. One, you know, the scale factors are going to change. And we're going to insert all those drawings. <coughs> and there's the drawings. Now notice the first two drawings are, are small. Next two drawings are bigger, and then the last drawing is even bigger. Well, what that means is the scale factors are changing. So the annotation size, the text size, and all that stuff, uh, it changes with the length of the railing. <coughs> so you don't have to worry about scale factors and annotation sizes and you know di different dim scale, uh, different dimension sizes and all that stuff. Uh, it does a very good job in controlling your dim scales. Now we're going to close this book because it's a new one, and we're going to we're going to import our complete bill of material. Well, there's the first bill of material. There's the second bill of material. Here's the third, and the fourth, and the fifth. So. <clears throat> this is the really name, whatever it is that you put in the drawing. Uh, you need to use a an extension of one, two, three, four, five, six. You don't have to use R one or R two, but you need to use a one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, right on down some numeric number on the end so that it can count the railing system. If it doesn't, it will explode, and you will not get a good result. <clears throat> this is the piece parts. This is this is the quantity of those pieces. This is what those pieces are, the material type. Uh, let me move that over right here. <clears throat> this is the size in feet or length in feet. That's the length in inches. This is a description of that part. And this is going to be the bill of material column. <clears throat> so you can come in basically and, and build your little macro off to the side. In this particular spreadsheet, I'll send the spreadsheet along with the macro. And you can use it in your Excel. <clears throat> then you can build, or I'll even build one over here on the side or up at the very top. Uh, how much all these parts weigh. So it'll basically add up all the weights and present them right there for each each system. In fact, I'll build it. It should be bringing in the total weight to begin with. I'll, I'll, I'll make it so that it brings in the total weight <coughs> of this system. Uh, you won't have to do anything. I'll, I'll include the, the total weights of it. Uh, for more information, 
contact Dan Fleming at Dan's Mark Software Solutions. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of Excel. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at one of the railings, just for instance. <coughs> uh, you know, there's a slope of six foot. There's a rise of four foot. Uh, in the dialog itself, you control where the center line of that post is from the edge of the slope. So that slope, that dimension that you put in there, is the actual slope itself. That's not the center of the rail. <coughs> I mean, of the post. Uh, you can you can control where the post goes. So you can have a positive number or a negative number. A positive number goes away from the slope. A negative number goes back into the slope and goes uphill. Same thing with the left hand side. Positive goes away from the slope. Negative goes back into the slope. The top rail is controlled individually uh, <clears throat> and you could have it automatically aligned with the post itself like it's shown here. <clears throat> now in you can, if you needed to extend the top rail for any reason out past that post, uh, let's say three more feet, put a positive, <coughs> put a positive number in there. Uh, there's check boxes in the dialog itself to align the top rail with the post, and it automatically brings in the grab rail uh, and aligns it. <coughs> with the outside post, there's only one bracket option right now, and that's a Wagner. Uh, <clears throat> type, let's see, type HBR number 1930R. That's the only option that I have for, for brackets right now. Um, <clears throat> I may do a bracket designer later if everybody wants, wants a bracket designer. That's the bill of material. This is a drawing name. That's the quantities. It does not keep track of the quantities, so you have to edit the quantities. If it's the same railing, delete the drawing. Add a quantity to the existing drawing, uh, one of your existing drawings. That's too much information for me to uh, <coughs> to compare each one of these railings to, <coughs> because it's going to get complicated once I <coughs> write the coding so that you can move the middle posts anywhere you want to. Right now, basically, uh, <clears throat> we'll look at this drawing down here. Basically, they're calculated from outside of post to outside of post. I'm going to write the code so that you can actually move the middle post anywhere you want to. <clears throat> so you need you can do a positive or a negative from the point that it's calculated. So if it's supposed to be here, you can move it back to here, and you know maybe it'll. Uh, <clears throat> what it'll do is it'll it'll take the distance from wherever you move that post to, and it'll recalculate the pickets from one post to another. So if you move both all these posts forwards and backwards, it's going to calculate between each post to get that picket spacing. So the picket spacing might not be the same all the way down. Uh, if there's any way to do picket spacing so it's all equal, <coughs> and you can move the posts uh, backwards and forwards, please let me know the calculation because I sure incorporated it in my software. Also, it puts the slope in here. Uh, that's the two and three sixteenth slope with a twenty two foot run and a four foot rise. You can check it on your calculator. It does this little uh, section also. <clears throat> Let me get regen right quick. Uh, you can see the the pickets on the inside going all the way up to the top rail. I'm going to have a lot of different options in this program. This is a brand new program. It's not even for sale yet. I'm not finished with it. <clears throat> It'll be another couple of weeks before I release it. <clears throat> For more information, contact Dan Fleming at Dan's Mark Software Solutions. Thanks.